very much, Bruno. That was a fantastic comeback, a famous win. Oh, obviously, it's always important to win the game. Doesn't matter, as I said before, the game for us doesn't matter. The opponent most important is winning, and we did it. It was an amazing comeback, great effort from the team. I said it before the before the game to the team. We look like a team now. Some months ago, well, some time ago, you could see sometimes a team, sometimes a little bit. Each one of us looking a little bit for ourselves, but now you see a proper team that works hard for each other, and you see that it pays. The first goal was a little bit controversial, did, because Marcus was offside, and you're in on goal. Did you shout? Did you call? No, I think because I was facing the goal, Marcus probably saw that I was in a better position. I didn't know if any of us was on offside or not, but it doesn't have any influence because there was no one closer to him. So it doesn't make any influence on uh, on the teammates to defend. The only one close was one close to me, so it is what it is. But it's a goal at the end. We are really happy for that. Marcus, the winner. I, I, I thought you were injured in the first half. You were going to make the second half. But I mean, what a finish. Uh, just a little knock, but um, you know, in games like this, you have to just try and push through. And you know, thankfully, I managed to managed to do that. Obviously, scoring the goal at the end and, and winning the game. And you know, that's what we set out to do. As Bruno said, that's always the aim before every game. This game obviously is a, a little bit special, but either way, we're, we're pleased to have the three points and continue winning at Old Trafford. You needed something to lift you because at the start of the second half, City looked like they had control. Garnacho changed things, he added some pace in there, didn't he? Yeah, it's a change of dynamics, you know, um, and I've, I think I've said this many times before, but the options that we've got coming off the bench, even when we've had, we've had injuries this year at times in the forward line and everyone's played out of position, Bruno played out of position today. Um, but you, as you can see, everyone's putting a shift in, and when you've got players like Arna, young, hungry, full of talent, ready to come on and, and make a difference, and you know anything's anything's possible. Um, but yeah, like I said, we're, we're very pleased to, to manage to come back, win the game, get three points, and now it's about recovering and moving on to the next game. And there's no doubting the significance of this result, particularly when you look back to October. You're now one point behind City. Uh, that doesn't matter for us. We have to look forward. We have to look forward for the next game because. You can be closer, but if you don't keep winning, they will go. So the mentality has now is to be celebrating because it's a big win on the derby. It's a long day today, so we have to celebrate that. But from tomorrow, straight away ahead on Crystal Palace. It's always tough to play away there. We all know that. So our focus has to be straight on that. It was a nice interchange for that first goal. I think he could do the same for Marcus. And that's a Bruno. He's, he's player of the match. <laughs> well done, gents. Well played. Marcus Rashford in imperious form at the moment on the score sheet again for the ninth game in a row at home. Yesterday, Eric Ten Hag said his team should act like winners. And Bruno Fernandes there, Rio, is saying that the, the difference now, they look like a team. Yeah, you can see that. I think, as I said to you before, they would have been like a bit of a, a fragile team in the environment there. You can see there were cracks in that. And to now there's, there's a togetherness. I think it's all knitted together by Casemiro. I think he's been the most important important um, part in the whole jigsaw for them at the moment. It's by no means finished, but he's a really important part in being the glue that sticks everything together and it all falls through him. But they, I, like, I'll repeat myself again, but they would go a goal down, not even against here, a feeding now of this team, not just through fairy tale football and great passing and whatnot, but through commitment and tackles and other things that get the crowd and the emotion going in the stadium and it's needed. And they are loving it here, they really are. Don't worry, Jolio, and you can have your say <laughs> very shortly. There is much to discuss after Manchester United's 2-1 win in the Derby. City went in front, De Bruyne setting up Jack Grealish to take the lead, but Bruno Fernandes equalised. Rashford was offside, but he left it for Fernandez to level the score and then Garnacho twisted and turned, set up Rashford to score for his ninth home game in a row and the smiles are back at Old Trafford. The way, the way to sell your car sponsors the Premier League on BT Sport. Sponsored by Bet365. Old Trafford is crackling with anticipation for the Battle of Manchester. Oh, that's your ball! Two up! Marcus Rashford! Manchester is red once again.
They are dreaming once again at the Theatre of Dreams. Manchester United have only lost once in their last 19 in all competitions. Rio, Paul and Jolien with me. Deep breath, Jolien. <laughs> what was your biggest concern or, or disappointment from the City point of view? Yeah, the result, obviously. Um, Derby Day win, you want to do that for the fans. Um, and it's been a disappointing result game and week. Um, but for me personally, it's the detriment it does to potential title race. Um, bigger picture and the greatest respect to United and, and who they are. This is a derby game, but for, for Man City, it's about winning the title. Um, and obviously that's detriment to them today. <laughs> that's that's a little dig there, isn't it? Yeah. He couldn't help a himself. One. A little one. He couldn't help himself. <laughs> it was all City at the start of the second yeah. half, though, Jolie, and they, they took the lead. Just have your moment here and just talk <laughs> us through how they picked Man United apart for that goal. No, obviously Pep recognised um, the, the frailties in the first half and he tweaked it a little bit and then Kevin De Bruyne here exploits the space um, and unlike the first half, he played the ball to the back stick and, and Jack Grealish, great substitution, obviously uh, came on and scored the goal. But listen, at this stage of the game, City are comfortable, um, not create, creating loads of chances, but very comfortable in possession and, and been able to, to create the tempo. Um, but yeah, obviously the outcome of the game isn't great. And that was their only shot on target. They didn't have a, a shot on target yeah. in the game against Southampton as well. Yeah, again, that will be worrying. The fact that the um, other two games, it's one shot on target, um, isn't great viewing for City. Um, and unlike Pep's teams and that we've come to see, but again, there's obviously something going on there. But I I'm not too worried. It's, it's two games over the course of the season. I'm sure there'll be trophies there at the end. And be honest, at that point, Paul, did you genuinely think Man United had a chance of coming back? I thought if they get one, there's a good chance of getting two. It's always likely to, to happen over the atmosphere. As Jolene said, I thought City were in good con control of the game. 20 minutes after after half time, you know, you was slightly worried. I thought Marcus looked like he, he looked injured to me. He looked like he was injured or lazy. I'm not sure what it was. But these superstar players, they can produce moments that win games, and you have to keep them on the pitch at all times. And you know, I think a special mention for, for Garnacho as well. I thought it was a Massive influence when he came on. I a bit more of an influence than, than Anthony was, and you know he's shown when he's come into the game he, he can beat a man. He's so quick and create a goal. It looks like he's going to score. He runs through all the time, and he made you like to look, look really dangerous. And that equaliser is the controversial goal. Rashford was was clearly offside. Rio Peter Walton though saying he, he left it, didn't touch the ball, wasn't interfering with an opponent. I think I know what you're going to say, but how did you see it? It's a goal. No, I, I just don't think it... Marcus doesn't impact any of the defenders' running strides, running patterns uh, or positions. Um, and I think it's intelligent from him. He's probably had a shout from Bruno, but intelligent from all of them. It's a great pass initially. He is offside for Rashford. But it's a fantastic finish after that. Cool, calm, collected, clinical. Um, but I just don't feel that any of the defenders can really impact this play. Anywhere he's in interfering with nobody, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. He's not interfering with any of the defenders. He doesn't touch the ball, I think, with a, will have a big influence on it. And you have to say at the end of it, good communication from Bruno. He must mm. have been shouting Marcus to leave it. It's a lovely finish. Yeah, Paul recognised straight away that he, was, he wasn't interfering. And I was just hoping he, he dummied the ball in some way mm. um, so Bruno could, uh, Bruno could um, finish it off. But yeah, it, it's onside. Any defender they're going to expect that not to be given? Be given that, that's, the rule, that's the part of the rule I don't like. The, the defender's done well to play offside and he's interfering in the run um, and in anticipation of the defender. So I seen it the other day against, I think it was Wolves, Liverpool, in a similar situation. I'm thinking if, if he's not there, then the defender clears that up. But yeah. Yeah, again, it's it's one of them. Marcus actually isn't interfering. He's offside, but he's interfering. Some will say, City fans, it's at Old Trafford, Manchester United, getting the decisions. Well, you've got to put yourself in the position to get decisions and you've got to make yourself a dangerous team at times and I thought we didn't do that as much as you would have liked here at Old Trafford but when we did I said we got in there and we were clinical but um, people listen they're going to say oh because it's Old Trafford here and there with certain decisions gone on in the year I think listen over a quarter of a season it all weighs itself out. And then just four minutes later you already spoke about Garnacho. just just talk us through how good he was in, in the build-up to that that winner I, I think he's been good every time I've seen him mm. this season I think he's been a real threat as I said I thought he probably should have come on before Anthony although Anthony you know he does as his strength does have his strengths don't get me wrong but this lad is direct mm. he doesn't care there's no fear in a, in a young player he wants to score goals and he wants to make goals and he's he, he's more than capable of doing it you see against Aki you, you fancy him but it's only his, his first ball wasn't great. He got away with that one a little bit. Mm. And then all he does is he puts it into an area and thankfully Marks is there and the four Marks is on. You, you expect him to score and he, 
he slides it on it. So you know what? He, he, he's, he's a player who is, with his age, he has no fear and he's not affected by reputations. No. So I mean, like you, for instance, I, I see yeah. a lot of wingers face up with someone like Carl Walker, and because of his reputation and his, his attributes, pace, strength, etc., probably come back and keep passing it backwards. But him, oh no, that was a winning goal. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, but yeah, sorry. <laughs> on fire, isn't he, though, Marcus Rashford at the moment? Oh. Just just flying, especially here at home. It, he's unstoppable. As I said, for the first 70 minutes, I, I thought there was something wrong with him, honestly. I thought, mm. well, he did obviously look like he, he was injured, but he just didn't look the same. He looked like his appetite had gone a little bit. But as I said, with he, these players, they can win your games at any point of the game. They can just mm. turn it on like that, and the speed, the power, the strength, the finishing ability. And again, he's won United another game today. Well, I'm sure Pep Guardiola wasn't happy with that equaliser. We can hear from the Manchester City boss now with Jez. Pep, how do you react to that? There's a lot of tempers in the in the tunnel and at the end of the match. Uh, unhappy with some of the decisions there? The game was really good. Uh, we played really good and in our levels that we play against them all the time. They are an incredible threat in the transitions, in the contra-attacks. Uh, but the game, I congratulate the team and he's a proud to come here and play with his personality and they run behind us and expect one actions and punish us in the transitions. Is there any dispute from your side about the first goal, whether Rashford was offside? Well, Rashford was offside, Bruno Fernandes no, intervene Rashford or not, distract our keeper and distract our central defenders, the rule, I don't know is the rule, but uh, I know where we play. <laughs> And Harland as well, another penalty claim there as well, which was waved away. But I asked, but... Uh... Yeah, no answer. <laughs> but you seemed to have control in the second half, didn't you? And then it just... Well, in the away. first, except five, ten minutes, because our fullbacks were not in the position, but the second half was really good. And, of course, in these stadiums, always they have, you have to do it. And But, uh, yeah, we, we miss a little bit our threat up front, our place up front. We were a little bit disconnected, but it's not easy, but they follow men to men. Uh, the switch of plays, the fullbacks are close to our wingers, but uh, yeah, we, I think uh, we, we make a fantastic game. So counting the quality of the opener. And it's a good assessment. It's a, it's a long season. There's plenty of plenty of games to play yet. Yeah, absolutely. I don't care the Premier League and the Carabao Cup. We cannot win, so we won a lot. So it's it's not a problem. Problem is we behave and perform like we have done. Always we are focused on that. So Carabao Cup is out. What, what it doesn't matter. But we didn't perform how we were, how we are, and today we perform. And after the win, win another club. So, but now is don't be distracted what happened today in the first goal and focusing, of course, in uh, in sports and in a few days. Thank you, Pat. You're very welcome. Pat Guardiola saying Manchester City played a good game. If Arsenal, though, win the North London derby tomorrow, Jolie, and they can go eight points clear, how significant do you think this could be in the? title race context. Yeah, it'll be huge um, if, they, if they go on to win that game. But obviously, they've still got to play Arsenal twice. Arsenal still got to play United. So there's still a lot of games to be played and points to be won. And so if Arsenal go on beating in all them games and, and beat United and City convincingly in the, in the coming weeks, then they will go on to deservedly win the title. But like I said, there's so much football to be played and now you can hopefully gain an experience. And the City group and the City squad have been in this position um, over the last, what, five or six years, numerous times. So hopefully that bodes well for them at the end of the season. Do you know, do you know the, the confidence that gives you, though? When you watch a game like this, the confidence it mm. gives this Arsenal team, they must be sitting there kind of licking their lips, can't wait for this game. Huge game, but they can't wait for this game. It's a, it's a great place to be. Yeah, well, Eric Ten Hag, for him, he's turning Man United into a force to be reckoned with. They're just a point behind City now. We can hear from the Man United boss with Des. Eric, that's a, a big, big result. You must be delighted, not just with the result, but with the manner how you fought back. I think uh, with the performance as well. I think first half we play very well and we defend very well. Uh, we are proactive. Uh, we break good uh, opportunities we create in the breaks. So yeah, I was really happy in half time with that. Um, we should have won all up, but it wasn't. And then after half time, uh, it changed. We had to sub uh, Anthony Martial. He had some complaints, and then changes obviously the game. Uh, City came in the game. We were not that proactive anymore. And just before I want to change, then they score. And, and you're running after facts. 
But then, what you say, uh, the spirit in the team is, is so huge. Uh, the belief is there uh, that the game is 90 minutes and that they can fight back. Uh, they keep believing and they turn around. And so I'm really happy with that performance of the team. A bit of a dispute about the first goal, whether Marcus was in <laughs> interfering with play as Bruno no. scored. How did you see it? Yeah, I can see that uh, from the other side as well. But the thing when you see the rules, yeah, of course, it's um, uh, a confusing moment for the back line of, of the opponent. But uh, when you follow the rules, um, he didn't touch the ball, he was not interfering, and yeah, uh, then it's a goal because Bruno came um, come from the back. Yeah, but I can see from the other side as well, yeah. <laughs> Marcus Rashford, I mean, it looked like he was out in the first half. It looked like he was pulling up with an injury, but you can see how strong he is and how confident he is. And he had that pre pre season as well, that's obviously made him physically stronger. Yeah, but yeah, players have to be resilient and uh, you get uh, kicked in a game and uh, obviously uh, it happened and it hurts, um, but yeah, you have to keep going. Um, uh, you have to do it uh, to get the right result, to get the right performance and uh, fight and uh, deal uh, with that painful moment or, uh, or even if it keeps painful, uh, you have to contribute, uh, games go, uh, game will go on and that's what he did today and you see he got rewarded for it and the team got rewarded for it. Uh, in top football you have to suffer, uh, sacrifice for getting the right result and to win something. And we talked before the game about testing yourself against the best. This is a, a step up for Manchester United in terms of display. I think that's the right uh, conclusion. It's another step forward and um, I think the belief is back but uh, we are in a good direction uh, but uh, there's still uh, as a long to come and you have to see today as well and City is I think the best playing team uh, in this league with Arsenal and they are good as well and uh, you have to work out of possession. Um, if you want to get a result uh, you have to be really good in the defending and I think that is what we did and then still they have qualities uh, in a split moment uh, to, to score a goal. We have, uh, we have seen that today, so one mistake and, and they score. But also uh, you get rewarded when you do well, when you get the right organisation, when you get the right intensity, when you are coming into the duels and you win them and uh, then you can get the right duels of the right uh, result on the, on the game and you get the right spaces and then on ball. Uh, in possession. Also, you have to do something with those spaces, and I think I have to yeah, really compliment the team for that. Congratulations, Eric. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> it was seen as a real test of Manchester United's progress under Eric Ten Hag today. What did we learn, Paul? Because that's now nine wins in a row in all competitions. Well, we've learned that they can beat a big team um, when the pressure's on, when they needed to. You know, we've, you asked me all the question about are they in the title to race before? I think you have to say they are. I think if they keep people fit, they're one point behind City now. And City, to me, are still the favourites. They're still the best team in this league. It's OK winning games now. It's like we said before, March, April times. It's April time. It's so hard to win those games. Arsenal are doing really well. They look a really good team. Injuries could affect them. And in experience, they've got a manager who hasn't won a league title. They've got players who haven't won trophies, really. So, if, look, there's 20 games to go. Man United, City, 20 games. Arsenal, 21, 21 games. There's so, there's so far to go in this. this. This could change by February. A lot of football yeah. to be played, yeah. absolutely. They haven't finished above City since Sir Alex Ferguson retired in, in 2013. Does it feel like they're, they're closer than ever to achieving that? Well, they're closing the gap slightly, yeah, but I still think there's a, a major way to go. I think the, the, the gulf between the clubs is still huge. Um, don't let this, this result kind of take the way you're looking at things and become un unrealistic. Man United has still got a way to go, but they're on the right road now. And I think Man United fans, I think I felt something in this ground today that I hadn't felt for a long time. There was a belief. There was a connection between the, the, the pitch, the players on the pitch and the fans again, because there's a committed team out there that are willing to fight, who won't fold under pressure, who won't fold when there's a bit of a bad spell in the game. And that can only be good for the future of this team. But the manager, I think he has to have huge compliments right now because he's, he's building a team um, that are, are up for the fight. Casemiro uh, said he's obsessed with winning more than any other manager he's worked with, and he's he's worked with Ancelotti, Zidane, Benitez. Mm. He says he's he's absolutely obsessed with winning. Well, I think you listen to the points and the key things he talks about there is like commitment, is, and, and he's he's really kind of 
uh, meticulous with his approach to it and the way he, you, you can tell he breaks the games down. He does a lot of work and is diligent behind the scenes and then carries out on a training pitch. And you can see that there's patterns of play. Pep said it. What's the difference between, between this Man United team to the one they played against when they beat him 6 3? He says, I can see patterns of play. That comes from the training ground. So there's work being done and you're seeing the fruits out here. And they nullified Haaland as, as well today, Jolian. Are Man City better with Erlen Haaland or, or just different? Different. I think you can only say different. I think the goals he scored prove that he's effective. Um, they can dominate teams. It was, what, 100 and so days he'd scored a hat-trick in his fixture. So he can't. they can't be worse with him in the team. Someone that scores you this amount of goals at this stage of the season doesn't make teams worse. Um, with the argument with, with Cristiano when he was here, so in regards to a goal scorer that makes a team worse is, is strange to me. But yeah, this is frustrating. He hasn't had a scored in a, in a couple of weeks. He hasn't. They haven't created enough chances to win games. And I said, I'm sure Pep's going to look at that and try to fix it. Mm -hmm. Bruno Fernandez got the man of the match, but should we give a bit of credit to Luke Shaw before we leave as well, Paul? What did yeah. you think of him today? Yeah, I thought he was brilliant, um, especially in key moments in, in the second half. The last five minutes when they're going for it, a really good header at the back post. These two will probably know more than that positioning wise for me, but. Yeah, he was really aggressive, really strong. And I think they miss him in that left-back area, but he has come in well and looks really good and assured at the centre-half. Um, yeah. I think, looking at United's style and where they're at, I think the manager, he wants to get to a City style of play. At some point, he'll expect his team to be dominant in possession, creating chances all the time. But he's realised that he hasn't got that type of players yet. They're not quite good enough to do that. And he's found a way to win, and you've got to give him credit for that. Yeah, going back to the Shaw thing, I, I think he looks the most composed player in possession, especially at centre-half. I think he's just looked assured there and he looked like he's played there for seasons. So when he's in there, he hasn't caused any problems. And I'm, I'm surprised why opposition teams haven't targeted him, especially physically. Jolian, don't worry, he'll get over it soon. That's all we've got time for, guys. We've run out of time. Thank you very much for your company today. Manchester is red. We've got another big game next weekend as well. We are at Anfield for Liverpool against Chelsea from 11.30. But right now, there's a lot more to come this afternoon on BT Sports. So let me hand you over to BT Sports Score. Have a great afternoon. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Yes, what a result for Manchester United in the derby. We are going to continue to dissect some of those big decisions in the game.